all right so now i want to look at the second um part of the eda which is data visualization so let's comment all right and so this is going to be um two okay eda2 okay so i want to look at data visualization this is um basically trying to use graphs to describe your data okay so i think we are good to go so as we did in our previous tutorial we look at some summary statistics for quantitative variables as well as summary statistic for um, qualitative or the categorical variable. we are going to do the same thing here we are going to look at some graphs for quantitative variables as well as graphs for categorical or qualitative variables okay so let's start with that of um so 2.2.1 okay so this should be graphs um, graphs for quantitative quantitative variables okay let me copy this then we do one for categorical or the qualitative okay so graphs for qualitative okay so what are some of the graphs that we can use for visualization um, with when you have a quantitative variable so we can make use of histogram that is the most frequent use so let's look at um, histogram one of them is histogram histogram right Histo histogram plot okay so um, a histogram is just one way to graphically represent the distribution of your data using bars of different height okay so how do we get a histogram plot can you make use of the hist function right let's say one to plot get a histogram plot of sepal length so sl then we can add some title right let's say this will be histogram histogram plot of sepal length okay we can also add some notes let's say i want to say this one is etm image okay so let's quickly execute this to see um the result control d so we are going to have a graphic window it's going to display you're going to have a new display of graphic window um it's still compiling so by default we are making use of a bin width of 12 right so here we go so this is the histogram plot of our super length right if you want to edit this graph then you can use this icon here right that's the graph editor so once you click on this then you can double click on this to change the background color right so double click all right so i just want to work with the colors so let me change this to medium blue and apply right so you see um let's say i want to change the color of the bar so i double click on it and change this color to let's say let me scroll up so let's say um any color of your choice okay apply so here we go okay so you can also double click on this to change the title okay um you can double click on this to change the label on the y axis you can also double click on this to change the label on the x axis okay so this is basically how to get your histogram plot from this plot you can see that this distribution is nearly symmetric right so we are good to go so let me close this i don't need this for now don't save let's go back to our do file um let's say now i want to get a histogram plot but i want to add the density curve in my histogram plot so how do we do that so i'm going to say hist xl and now i'm going to add a normal 
right and let's say by default we were having the density so I want to get a frequency instead of density on my y axis I want to get a frequency at the same time I want to get a normal um, density curve in my histogram plot okay so let's try and execute this control D so here we go so we see that once we add a density um, the normal density curve you can see that this is basically approximately normal or nearly symmetric okay so we are good to go so you can double click just click on this icon double click to edit this let's go back to our do file now let's assume we want to um, get the histogram plot but this time we want the histogram plot of separate length across the levels of the species so we want a histogram plot of separate length separate length across the levels of the species okay so how do we do that i'm going to use a hist function xl separate length i still need my normal okay but this time i want to add the species to it so sp is for species right so let's see how this works um let's try and execute this Control d so let's check our okay so here is the graphic mm, let's go back to our do file i want everything i want everything um to appear in the same row so let me add another argument to this let's say rows should be one okay so let's try and highlight this and execute Control d all right so here we go so we can see that in this um, histogram plot of the separate length across the levels of the species we can see that um, that of the vesicular seems to be um, approximately normal so this is a typical example of mesochetic okay this means that the thickness of the distribution is normal in shape this is a typical example of a platychetic distribution right this means that the thickness of the distribution is flat and spread out and this will be a typical example of platychetic distribution which means that the thickness of the distribution is high and thin okay so you can double click on this to basically edit this once you click on this icon you can double click to add some features to this if you want to edit okay so let's go back to our do file on my do file right so i think we are good to go so another important um, graph for quantitative variable is the box plot so let's look at the second one which is the box plot okay so the box plot and um, basically is a way to um, a way of let's say displaying the distribution of your data based on the five number summary okay so let's see how we can get a box plot of the separate length so i'm going to use a graph function graph box right and this time i want a box plot of separate length okay and let's say i want to add a title so there's going to be a box plot of separate length okay so let's try and execute this control d so here we go so we can see that this has given us the box plot of the separate length okay and if you look at this this side is giving us the with a five number summary this side is giving us the minimum value this is giving us the first quartile or the 25th percentile this will indicate the median value or the 50th percentile this will indicate the um the 75th percentile or the third quarter and this is basically indicating the um, maximum value okay so this is how you can see the shape of the distribution the area here and the area here are approximately the same right this is nearly symmetrical okay so compared to the 
histogram plot we, we saw that it was also nearly symmetrical okay now let's look at how we can get a box plot of the cell per length across the levels of the species so let's go back to our do file and do this so let's say want to graph box of separate length but now we want to add the species to it okay so by species so this is going to give us the box plot of the separate length across the levels of the species i want to see my graphs in the same row so row should be one so let's highlight this and execute control d so let's see the effect all right so we can see that once we try to um, get the box plot of the separate length across the levels of the species we can see some extreme values right having a stream value does not necessarily mean that it is an outlier you have to be very careful when you are dealing with an outlier an outlier is any observation that is not consistent with the rest of the data values okay so the fact that we have a stream values here does not necessarily mean that we have um, outliers okay you have to examine your data very well i've always been using this as an illustration let's take for example this are the scores of some student in a particular class and this is over 100 okay in percentage so this if you look at this data set or data we can see that the center for this is going to be around 60 to 70. let's assume a student gets a mark of 123 percent right so in your data entry maybe you recorded 123 this is going to be an extreme value okay but this time this will be classified as an outlier because this is not consistent with the rest of the data values this is in percentage it's supposed to be over 100 so get 123 percent is something that must be omitted okay because if it's over 100 and someone is getting 123 percent that means that it's not really consistent with the rest of the data values now let's assume someone get a score of let's say two this is also an extreme value compared to the central value okay but this time this extreme value is not an outlier because two percent is still within hundred percent so even though it's an it's an extreme value it's not an outlier in this case okay so you have to be very careful when you are dealing with outliers so once we try to get a box plot of the lens across the levels of the species you can see some extreme values for setosa as well as for virginica okay okay so we are good to go now let's go back to our do file and see what next so i think we are good to go for box plot another important graph for quantitative variable is the scatter plot or the scatter matrix okay sometimes you like to see the relationship between your variables and in that case you seeing a scatter plot will be very important okay so let's look at the third part which is scatter plot scatter okay plot or sometimes you can get a scatter matrix okay that is if you want to look at the relationship a graphical way of checking the relationship for all your continuous variable then scatter matrix will be the best so let's start with scatter plot this is where you want to just look at the relationship between two continuous variables graphically okay so let's make use of the graph function but this time you are going to use a two-way function okay two way two way then we also have to make use of the scatter right so let's say we want to get a scatter plot of sepal length and petal length okay so title this has um scatter plot or let's say scatter diagram of separ length and separ and peta length okay so let's highlight this right, let's highlight everything and execute okay control d so this gives us a scatter diagram between these two variables and we can see that there seems to be a positive correlation between these two variables okay if you want to edit this you can just click on this icon double click to change the background color you can do the same for the point okay so let me go back to um let me close this 
to my do file let's say I want to get um, a scatter diagram for these two variables across the levels of the species so let me copy this let me copy this right copy this and press and now use the function or the argument by species okay so let me see I want everything in the same row okay so row one let's highlight this and execute control D so this is going to basically give us a scatter diagram uh, for the two variables across the levels of the species and we can see that for this there seems to be a positive correlation for basicala and virginica but for settles so there seems to be no correlation okay so we are good to go now let's look at how we can how do we get um, the relationship for all the continuous variables okay we have four of them we have to make use of the scatter matrix so in here i'm going to say graph matrix okay then the names of the variables are as follows separ length separ length separ width petal length petal width okay so let's do that so this is basically let me give it a title so this is going to give us a scatter diagram for the continuous or the quantitative variables for the quantitative variables okay so let's highlight this control let's execute this okay control d so here we go so we can see that we have some positive correlation between petal length and petal width there also seems to be some positive correlation between petal length um, and petal sepal length right the same applies to sepal length and petal width okay but for between the relationship between sepal length and sepal width seems to be um, not linear right we don't see any linear relationship in here so this is how you can also graphically describe some of the relationship for all your continuous variables okay so i think we are good to go let's go back to our do file all right so i think these are some of the important graphs for quantitative variables now let's look at um, some graphs for qualitative or categorical variable so let me zoom this okay so now i want to look at some graphs for the categorical variable and one of the most important graphs is the bar graph okay so let's start with a bar graph bar okay bar graph so how do we get a bar graph we are going to make use of the graph function and say bar okay but we need to get the frequencies for each of the um, labels so let's use the count right and say use the over argument over species okay so we can give it a title and say this is a bar graph or the species variable okay so i think we are good to go let's try and highlight this and execute it okay so um control d so this gives us a bar graph of this for the species variable okay and we can basically edit this just click on this icon double click on this to change the background color so let's say i want to give it a different color i can even change the orientation to horizontal okay let's say uh, let's go to color um let me give it um, let's say light blue okay so apply okay okay so let's let click on the bars let me change the color of it so let's say orange okay apply okay so we are good to go so this is how to get a bar graph okay now let me close this i don't need this don't save all right so let's um go back to our do file 
okay so okay in my new file now another important graph for the qualitative variable is the pie chart or the pie graph okay so let's look at how we can do this um now i want to consider the pie graph okay so let me copy this all right and paste it here okay so um let me change this to pi all right um now we don't need a count we don't need this count so over species but i would like to add one more argument that is the p label this is basically um, going to help us to place the value labels for the species inside each slice of the pie chart okay so i'm going to say um all underscore all name okay so let's change this title to uh, the paragraph or the pie chart of species variable okay so let's execute this highlight and execute control d so here we go so this gives us the pie chart of the species variable okay so this is basically how to get some data visualization in stata okay so i think we are good to go please if you find value in this video don't forget to subscribe if you have not and also click on the notification bell to get more updates